morning. This morning I'm going to show you the seven major steps I took to model the core box router bit in SketchUp. What we're modeling is the cut that it makes in a piece of wood. In front of you I have the completed model and I've shown you here just a few different types of cuts. The first one is the core bit, a single cut in a board. The second one is that cut replicated five times. The third one is sort of a, I guess you call it a serpentine um, uh, cut. And notice that the edges are all square. Now in real life, that's not the way it'll look. In fact, what I did was I left it this way so that you can see that SketchUp doesn't quite model it correctly with the sketch with the follow me tool. You have to do some cleanup to make it look right. In the shop, if you cut this, the inside corners would be square and the outside corners would be rounded. This is another type of cut that SketchUp does model correctly. And this is what happens after you correct for what's is actually um, the case when you cut something in the shop. Notice the inside corner is square, the outside corner is round. And just think about that a moment, you'll realize why. There's seven steps I took to model this, and let me just show you what the major steps are. First I started with a plain board, and I blew it up by a factor of 10. SketchUp has a problem of modeling small faces. And since we're going to create a number of small faces in this model, what I did was I took a 6 by 24 inch board and I blew it up to 60 by 240 inches. And everything I do will be blown up by a factor of 10. So the bit is a quarter inch bit, well it's a half inch bit with a quarter inch round or five inch diameter or 0.5 inch half inch diameter but when I blow it up ten times it's a five inch diameter. So the first thing I did was I created a circle with a face in the red, I'm sorry, in the green blue plane and another circle above it in the red green plane. This circle will serve later on, just a little ways down the road, it will serve as the path to create a globe using this circle. You'll see that in a moment. The second thing I did was made a semicircle. Same radius as before, or same diameter, depending on what you want to refer to five inches, uh, and with a face. And I'll show you how we're going to use that in a moment. All right, so what I did is that previous semicircle face, I just extruded it with the follow me tool along this line, and it created this shape, which is a half moon shape. I also created the globe. I took that circle with a face and with the follow me tool and this is a path I created this globe. Notice I also turned on view hidden geometry so I could see the geometric makeup of the globe. I then took that half circle over here and put it at the end of this line Step five, I took that globe and I cut it in a quarters. In other words, this is a quarter of the globe. I put one down here as well. This is the inside quarter of the globe. I, like I said before, I put the semicircle here and here at the beginning of this serpentine, also here, 
and I put it in the middle of this racetrack uh, outline, I guess. Right there in the middle. Don't put it at the corners. That uh, that could work out. Uh, that could make things messy. Next thing I did was I extruded all of that. So here I go. I extruded it and I cut the top face off. So you see this extrusion. Five of them here, just like this one, but five. This one, notice the square corners. This one, model correctly because of the round curve here. And this one modeled incorrectly. Notice the square inside and outside corners. We're going to fix that one up. What I next did is I took those semicircles, or quarter globes, rather, I should say quarter globes, and I placed them at the ends. One here, one here. Also, I did the same thing with these. And at the beginning of this one, and at the end of this one. Same thing here, the beginning and the end. Here I had to do something a little more tricky. This time I had to take the quarter globes and cut them into one-eighth globes. And what that allowed me to do was to take this one and place it here. And let me just rotate this a little bit so you can get a bit better view of what I did. Notice I took that one eighth globe and put it there. I put one of them here. Put another down here. And another here. So that now this path is modeled correctly. I could have done the same thing to this one and corrected these square outside corners. However, often in the shop what you do is you get something that looks like this corner and you want it to be square. And of course, in order to get that, you have to clean it up with the chisel. You have to come in here with chisels and square this up. That happens a lot in the shop. So I just left that the way it is. Now once I've got this completed, I can get rid of the view hidden geometry. And I can scale this from 240 and by 60 down to 24 by 6 by scaling everything by a factor of one-tenth, and again, I get the final model here. Okay, that's the simple version of what I did. If you want a more complete video, you're going to have to go to my American Woodworker blog as outlined in the write-up for this. Okay, have a good day, and we'll see you in the near future as I blog on American Woodworker. Thank you. Have a good day.